say a linebacker hits the running back and they have a head-to-head -head collision. I'm very interested in what can cause injury to the brain as a result of an impact, like an impact on a football field, even when a person's wearing a helmet. The force and the energy of that impact are transmitted to the helmet, to the surface of the helmet. That impact is transmitted through the helmet as a pressure wave or a stress wave. It eventually enters the skull and it enters the brain. The impact also has an impulse associated with it. So there's energy carried forward as well. And that energy is transmitted through the helmet into the skull and into the brain. The purpose of the helmet is to try to mitigate or lessen both that pressure and that impulse. The problem has been that everyone is focused on the force of an impact and only the force of an impact and measuring that. And they found that when they measure the force of the impact, by measuring it on the surface of the skull, right, instrumenting the helmet, they can't correlate that with brain injury. And the reason is force is not the whole story. Force is only part of the story. You need to also dissipate energy. If the impulse is not mitigated, then the, all of that energy of the impact goes into the brain and the brain has to dissipate that energy and it does that by deforming. Current helmets uh, essentially have the capability to dissipate some energy under certain conditions, but in an impact event they aren't. Our technology is a multi-layered polymer structure. Each of the layers is chosen to work together to mitigate impulse and force. We have a 2D prototype of a skull and a brain and a helmet. We put a speckle pattern on the brain and then we impact it at a known velocity with a known amount of energy and with a high-speed camera focused on it, we capture the deformation of the brain, how that speckle pattern moves. So we can switch out different helmet designs and directly look at how they affect the brain accelerations. Okay, so we are testing our current prototype against existing helmet designs and our preliminary data showed that our design can reduce rotational accelerations and translational accelerations over existing helmet designs. If you mitigate all of the harmful effects of that event, you are making a safer armor or a safer helmet or safer padding. And so our design tackles all of those. Okay? It tackles the pressure, it tackles the impulse. It mitigates all of the harmful effects of the blast or impact as much as possible in an application that needs to be used over and over and over again. You can dissipate energy by fracture and plastic deformation. And that's sort of the idea behind a bike helmet. If you're wearing a bicycle helmet and you fall and you hit your head and the helmet cracks, it dissipates energy, it protects your skull, it protects your brain, you throw it away and you get a new helmet. That's not a practical solution in a football game. So we designed our helmet to optimally dissipate the energy of an impact every time it's hit. Not just once, but every time it's hit. So the shape that goes into the solar cell demonstration is basically this, a series of very closely spaced cuts. So when you pull on it, it stretches out like that. Not only does it tilt the panels to face the sun, but it also moves them apart